Sometimes I don't want my painted papers to be pretty. I want them to be unusual or unpredictable and gritty. Gel printing can give me that look, but nothing creates gritty and unpredictable results like the metal patina techniques that I'm going to share with you today. And I'm going to do it on paper. These finishes are different than metallic paints, but it's just as easy to create stunning papers effortlessly. Just by using some easy to access materials, you can start creating a whole new type of painted paper for your mixed media artwork. I'm Jackie Bernardi and welcome to my studio. All right, today I'm going to get started by stamping some little sardines on this piece of newsprint. Now it could be any stamp that I used, but I just have a fish thing going on this year. And so I'm going to go with it. Uh, and I'm just using regular black ink from this ink pad here and stamping it on randomly over the newsprint. And this is going to contain shape later when we start using some of the leaf metals. But for now, we're going to use the liquid metals. This is liquid metal paint, and this one happens to be gold. The difference between liquid metal paint and metallic paint is that liquid metal actually has metal particles suspended in the medium, whereas metallic paints, they're made of mica suspended in the medium. That means if they're oxidized properly, the metal paints will create a beautiful patina. And that's what I hope to show you while we do this. So here I have some gold sardines, I have some black sardines, and now I just want to clean off this gel plate of the remaining gold. And I just use this on a strip of painted paper from another video. And that gold paint now is laying on there and that can be patinaed as well. All right, and while these are drying, I'm going to actually take some deep bronze metal paint and I'm going to roll that out on the gel plate as well. And this time I'm going to use a different stamp. And this is more of a mark making type stamp. So it's just going to, I'm just going to use some of this tissue paper here. This is not special tissue paper. It's just regular everyday tissue paper. And I am stamping on the bronze metal paint. Now, I don't actually know how well this is going to work because the bronze paint is going on super lightly. And I don't know if that will patina or not, but we are sure going to give it a try. And then since I have this beautiful pattern all over the gel plate, I thought, okay, well, let's pull that off and see if we can get some patina off of this gel print. The bronze is really a beautiful color. Just on its own, it's a beautiful color. And here I am spraying it with patina solution. So this happens to be green patina solution that I just sprayed on. And now I am dripping blue patina solution. So it may be obvious, but the blue patina solution will add sort of a bluish patina to the bronze. And the green patina will add a greenish patina to the bronze. I know, very obvious. But what you may not know is the amount of solution and the amount of actual paint you have will affect how it oxidizes and how it patinas. It will also be affected if your paint is wet when you put on the solution or if it's dry. So in this case, it was wet, but it wasn't really that wet because it came off of the gel plate and from a stamp. So we'll see how that actually goes. I'm going to move this off to the side so I can continue working on my little sardines. So I'm going to go ahead and spray the gold sardines with the green patina solution. And I'm just going to set it aside and let that solution dry on it. I didn't get that paint super wet. I just 
got little droplets on it. But on this piece of uh, paper, this mark making paper that I have here, where I have the gold paint, the residual from the gel plate, I put on quite a bit of patina solution. So it'll be interesting to see how that turns out as we move on. Now these here are gilding adhesives. This is the kind of glue that you use when you use metal leaf. It, uh, it adheres the leaf to whatever surface you put it on. So this is an adhesive pen. This other bottle here is just liquid adhesive, adhesive that you would apply with a brush. Now I really love this adhesive pen. You can do lettering work, you could do fine detail work with it, and then apply metal leaf to it. Now all metal leaf is, is actual metal that's been compressed into incredibly thin sheets of the metal, and which makes them very fragile, it makes them very flexible, and as you'll see, it makes them really beautiful. So I just applied the adhesive with the pen. I'm going to let that dry. And in the corner of this same piece of paper, over this dark blue base coat, I applied some steel metal paint. This is just plain steel. It's pretty gritty. It rolls on with a lot of texture. And what that is used for is to create a rust patina finish. So while that is drying a little bit, I'm going back to the sardines and the black sardines, I am going to apply the liquid adhesive to. So you can see I'm just brushing it on. I'm doing a thin coat, but I wanna make sure that the adhesive gets everywhere where I want the gold leaf or whatever leaf I use. I wanna make sure that it gets every single spot that I want covered. So you don't have to put on a lot of adhesive. And in fact, you really shouldn't. You just want a very thin coat, but a lot of coverage. So I'm just gonna go through, I'm not gonna get all of the sardines. I'm just gonna get a few of them. I could have done this with the adhesive pen, uh, but Really, the adhesive pen is new to me. Uh, using the liquid adhesive is what I'm most familiar with, and that's what I'm showing you here. All these supplies, by the way, you can get on Amazon. It's very easy. I have links in the description. Um, you can get all of this there and at fairly reasonable prices for what it is. I mean, these are real metals. This here is actually a variegated metal and it's absolutely beautiful. And all I'm doing is just loosely laying it down on top of the sardine that has some adhesive on it already. And I'm you know, not really doing anything other than just kind of laying the leaf on it. So this is one example of one way to put down the leaf. This is just quick and easy. I'm not overly concerned with the coverage on the sardine. I just want to show you. This second piece of uh, variegated leaf that I'm putting down, I'm being more careful with it. I'm actually brushing. This is a big floofy fan brush and it's super soft. And as I lay down the leaf, I'm pressing with the fan brush and making sure that it's got complete coverage. Now there's no leftover leaf here, whereas on that first sardine, you can see I still have plenty of leaf there. I haven't done the step yet where we actually adhere the leaf to the adhesive. Now this third sardine, I am doing in copper leaf. So this is real copper and it's just a sheet of copper leaf. And you can see how delicate the leaf is. But the beautiful thing about leaf, so long as the entire surface that you want the leaf to adhere to has some adhesive underneath it, even if it breaks up while you're applying it, it will melt in, not technically melt in, but it will feel like it melts in together and provide full coverage. And now I just took that 
uh, first variegated sardine and use the fluffy brush. The gilding brush is what it's technically called. And I just made sure it's adhered properly. So now I'm digging down into my, I call it my metal leafing kit. Everything I need to do metal leafing lives in this box. So this here is a piece of 24 karat gold leaf. Now this is precious. And I've had this box of leaf for about 23, 24 years now. And uh, I have many, many boxes of the gold leaf. <laughs> Goldfish. Um, anyway, uh, your leaf will last forever so long as you keep it in dry conditions. If, if you don't keep it in a container and you live in a very humid environment, you run the risk of the leaf oxidizing. So always make sure you keep your leaf covered. Um, you're not going to see me use the gold leaf a lot just because it is expensive and, and like I said, precious. However, there is imitation gold leaf that is absolutely beautiful. And I suggest if you're trying out metal leafing and metal patinas using leaf, go and get yourself some imitation gold leaf first and see how you like it. Uh, there is a difference in color, of course, uh, but unless you had them up next to each other, you wouldn't know that. So the imitation leaf is perfectly fine. Now I'm going in over the lettering that I created with the adhesive pen. And you can see I'm just using my index finger and I'm just rubbing in just little random pieces of that variegated gold and just pushing it right into the dried adhesive. When the adhesive dries, it dries tacky. And that's what you want. You want it to be tacky because that's what the leaf will adhere to. So look at this. Isn't that beautiful? And so just think about the applications that you could use that in, in your artwork. I mean, it's really the, the adhesive pen. I, as I mentioned before, it's brand new to me. And now I'm sitting here thinking, where have you been all my life? I could have been using this for everything. <laughs> now that we've, I've shown you how to leaf and we have some leaf on some paper, we're going to continue on now with patina-ing these papers. So this here is the green patina solution and I'm spraying it right on that variegated leaf that we just put on this paper. And then I'm going to set it down and I'm going to let it dry completely. As it dries, the solution oxidizes with the leaf and we should get a beautiful color variation on that leaf. Now in that corner where I put the steel paint, I'm now putting on some rust solution, which is just another patina solution, but it's, it's made with ingredients. I don't know what the ingredients are exactly, but it will create a rust finish. And I'm going to let that dry for quite a while. And here I'm going to use that little bottle of spray green patina, and I'm putting it right on all of the sardines, even the ones that don't have any leaf on them or gold paint. I'm just doing that so you can see what the patina solution dry looks like dry. All right, so this is the next day and look at this. So that variegated leaf has now turned this green patina. You can still see the leaf under it. It's a little hard to see from this angle, but you've got this beautiful patina on top of it. And in the bottom corner, look at the rust. Look how gorgeous that is over that dark blue background. And all that was was the steel paint mixed with the rust patina solution. I hope you're getting lots of ideas here because this can be used in so many things. So here are our sardines. 
And you can see where the patina solution was on the newsprint. It dried kind of a yellowish finish. But on the sardines themselves, they just patinaed beautifully. Absolutely gorgeous. Now this here, the bronze paint that we took off the gel plate didn't really patina with the solution. And I think that's because there wasn't enough bronze. I, I, I don't think it was enough material. I don't think it was wet enough. I, I just, I don't think it was there. So I'm going to give it another try, but I'm going to do it a little differently. Uh, instead of using the stamp this time, I'm going to go over the stamped marks with that bronze metal paint, and I'm just going to brush it on, just as if I were doing a mark making day and doing freehand marks. But I'm, do, I'm using the bronze metal paint, and I'm going to go through, and I'm just going to do this for a few minutes here. So I have this idea here that I would like to do three different looking marks with this technique here. What you just saw me doing was laying down the bronze paint onto the marks. Now I'm going to go in with some gold metal paint and again lay down this paint on top of the marks that are there. I'm just going to go through and do a few rows of this with the gold paint. So I have the bronze paint up top. I have the gold paint going in the middle. And what I'm thinking about doing is doing the steel paint at the bottom so that I can get rusted marks. This is super enjoyable and I really hope this turns out because I think it would look fabulous to use little bits and pieces of this in any given collage. So yeah, so here's the steel paint. I'm going to go in, I'm going to finish out these marks using the steel paint before applying any of the patina solutions. When you buy the patina solutions, they're already pre-mixed, so there's nothing that you need to mix. You can, of course, make your own but the kits that they sell are so easy. You can buy a bronze kit, you could buy a copper kit. Uh, so I'll, again, I'll link to some kits in the description below if you wanna give this a try. But what makes this effortless is literally all you have to do is put the paint down, which you already do anyway, and then hit it with some of the solution, whether you spray it on or drip it on, however you do it. It makes it really easy to create gorgeous finishes. And I say that with my fingers crossed that this works out. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to hit it with the patina solution. So the gold marks and the bronze marks, I'm going to hit both of those with the green patina solution, which is, I'm just going to spray it on. I'm tilting the paper downwards so that that patina solution doesn't get on the steel. And now I'm going into the steel and I'm putting the rust activator or the rust patina solution. And I'm going to drop that on Differently, I'm actually using a pipette here to drop the, uh, the solution, the rust solution on, so I can be pretty intentional about where that solution lands. I don't want every single mark to be perfectly rust. I do want there to be some variation. Oh yeah, look at this. It worked perfectly. Each of the metal paints patinaed gorgeously. We've got the rust over the steel. We've got the green patina over the gold. And then we've got the green patina over the rust. It's a little hard to see, but it's really beautiful. And then this we didn't do anything with because it was already dry. And here we are, this is it. This was a quick one because these are very easy, but this is patina and look how beautiful, I mean really beautiful and easy this was. 
Love the fish. Oh my gosh, what am I going to use those in? Love it. Thank you so much for being here. These are the videos I would watch next.